the length of OP. So OP is um, from the origin to this point of interest P, right? Uh, we can see clearly that P is minus 7 and 4 as uh, the coordinates, right? Minus 7 being the X and 4 being uh, the Y value of P. So let's go ahead and find the length of OP. So we can say that OP squared will be equals to x squared plus y squared, right? So OP is equals to uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? That's easy to see. So now what we just left with is a direct substitution. And if I go ahead and do that, we're going to have the x value uh, being minus 7 squared plus the y value which is 4 and then we also square that right and then if you put that in your calculator you should get a uh, square root of 65 as the length of op right and then i'm uh, moving to 5.1.2 we have a uh, which says let's find the value of tan of theta so what is tan of theta uh, by definition that right? uh, tan of theta is equals to the opposite divided by the adjacent uh, the opposite being the y and the adjacent being uh, the x right so it's easy to see now that we can say that uh, tan of theta is equals to we are doing everything uh, based on our point P, right uh, this is what is guiding us so it is easy to see that uh, on our point p the y value is 4 right so we're gonna have 4 divided by the x value which is minus 7 so the value of term theta is equals to 4 divided by minus 7 right it's quite straightforward there's no trickery at all there and then now uh, let's move to b uh, b is a bit demanding right so we have cos of theta minus 180 uh, degrees now we have to go to our Cartesian plane right uh, this one is a bit interesting so let me just remove this for a bit of clarity so theta is right here that's where we have theta if we had plus 180 we would be moving anti-clockwise but then we have minus 180 so we move in clockwise right so if we move clockwise we know that here all trig ratios are positive and then on the second quadrant uh, that's where sine is positive uh, we have tan here and then here we have cos right so let's go ahead and uh, move and see where we end up so minus 180 if you start in from uh, the first quadrant you're gonna end up in the third right so we're going to end up somewhere here in the third quadrant and it is easy to see that uh, on the third quadrant cos is negative right it's tan that is positive there so cos of theta minus 180 will be equal to minus cos of theta right that's how we do that and then um this will be equal to so minus and then what is the definition of uh, cos of theta right cos of theta is equals to uh, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse the adjacent uh, being uh, the x and the hypotenuse being what we calculated in 5.1.1 op right op that's our hypotenuse the length of the line so this will be equals to minus uh, the value of x that is minus 7 and then the value of op that is square root of 65 so if you compute that you will get 7 divided by square root of 65 as the value of cos of theta minus 180 right that is 5.1.2 let's do 5.2 and see where we end up uh, so the question in 5.2 is saying that let's determine the general solution 
of sin x cos x plus sin x is equal to 3 cos square x plus cos of x. So right, let me just copy that down real quick. So we have uh, sin of x cos of x plus sin of x being equal to 3 cos square x plus 3 cos x. Let's go ahead and solve this, all right? So we can take um, this term in the right-hand side to the left-hand side. If we do that, we're going to get uh, sine of x cos of x plus sine of x minus 3 cos square x minus 3 cos x is equal to 0. Right, so that's what we get if we take um, those two terms to, to the left hand side. Uh, but I want you to realize something here. Uh, we have sine of x here and we have sine of x here. So let's take sine of x as a coupled factor for those two terms. If we do that, we're going to get um, sine of x and then here we're going to be left with cos of x, right? So cos of x and then here we're going to left, be left with plus 1. So we have plus 1 right there. And then for the last two terms, uh, we have cos square x and then uh, we have cos x, right? And then we have this 3 here. We also have this 3 here. So why not take 3 cos of x as um, a common factor, right? Uh, minus 3 cos of x. So why not take minus 3 cos of x as a common factor? Yeah, let's do that and, and see what we have. So if we take minus 3 cos of x as a common factor, uh, for this first term, we're going to be left with um, cos of x, right? Cos of x. And then for the second term, we are going to be left with plus 1. And this is all equals to this is all equals to zero, right? Yeah, our general solution is now, you know, starting to come together, right? And then now I'm realizing that I have cos x plus 1 here and cos x plus 1. So why not take that as a common factor again, right? Uh, if I do that, I'm going to have um, cos x plus 1 and then i'll be left with so for this part i'm going to be left with sine of x right so sine of x and then for this part i'm going to be left with minus 3 cos of x so i have minus 3 cos of x and this is all equals to zero right so now i can see that uh, cos of x plus 1 is equals to zero but if that is not the case then um sine of x minus 3 cos of x should be equal to 0, right? If you multiply in two numbers and your answer is 0, one between the two numbers has to be 0, if not all of them, right? So that's why we can say that uh, on the in this part of the solution, we're going to say that uh, cos of x is equal to minus one oh, let's focus on this side first before going to that other one and then we can say that x is equal to cos arc of minus one so x is equal to 180 degrees right but then that's not all we have to see plus k multiplied by the period of course at uh, the period of course that is uh, 360 uh, degrees right so we have solved that for that part of our equation now uh, we can see that uh, sine of x on the other side is equal to 3 cos of x you can see that if i divide both sides by cos of x i'm going to end up with tan right so let's go ahead and do that so divided by cos of x divided by cos of x these two cancel out and then on the left hand side i have tan of x being equals to 3 right so now i just need to see x is equals to uh, tan inverse of 3 so x is equals to what x equals is equals to 71.57 degrees plus k multiplied by 
the period of turn. What's the period of turn again? 180 degrees. And just one last thing, uh, K is um, integer, right? 